All right, we are still sticking with parallel and perpendicular lines, but there's a little trick that I want to show you, because I know these problems come up in the homework. They give you an equation that's in standard form, and they want you to be either parallel or perpendicular to that. And they also want you to write your answer in both slope intercept form and then standard form. All right, so let's make it easy. When you have something that's in standard form, it's easiest to work with it in standard form, because ax plus by equals c is going to be parallel to ax plus by equals c prime. So we use that apostrophe, it's called prime in math, that means it's just a little bit different from this guy. Some kind of change has been made. But notice that the left side stays exactly the same. Because when it comes to your slope, your slopes have to be the same for parallel lines, and it's this side right here that gives you your slope, the ax plus by. So as long as that's the same, then your slope's going to be the same. And your constant just has to be something different. Now when it comes to perpendicular, that's where it gets a little bit trickier. For perpendicular lines, they have negative reciprocals for slopes. So to get their slopes to be reciprocals, you take these coefficients here for x and for y, and you crisscross them. Not only do you crisscross them, but you change either the, uh, the coefficient for y or the coefficient for x. So crisscrossing them is going to give you the reciprocal. Changing one of the signs is going to make it the negative reciprocal. So you don't change the, change the sign of both, you just change the sign of one of them. So let's see how that works out in this problem. So you want to be parallel to this and passing through that point. Well, as we see above, if you want to be parallel to that, you keep that the exact same way. So that's going to be 4x minus 7y what does it equal? Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. The 6 means nothing to me. The 6 is trash. The 6 does not figure into your answer. Okay. All we're going to use that for is to make sure that we do have a parallel line. So we know down here that number on the right side is going to be something that's not 6. So you can really put any number that you want here, and you're going to have an equation of a line that's parallel to that. So if you pick something other than 6, it's going to be parallel to this. But, this problem is not just about being parallel to that, it's also about going through that ordered pair. And we've seen this before. If I just plug in 8 for x and 5 for y, that's going to force my hand and tell me exactly what that number is, and there's no guessing involved. So if I work this out, we get 32, minus 35, and we get negative 3. So that's the number that goes here. It has nothing to do with the 6. Again, the 6 is trash. So by plugging in that ordered pair, it forces what that constant is on the right side. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Now, when you're doing this in my math, lab, they're going to say, find the answer in, in uh, slope intercept form first. I don't want to. Standard form was a lot easier. Like I hardly had to do anything. So if they ask for slope intercept form, I would say do the standard form first because it's really easy and then convert this to slope intercept form. And you know how to do that. All you have to do is move the 4x to the other side. So negative 7y equals negative 4x minus 3. Divide everything by this coefficient. And so we get y is equal to 4 sevenths x plus 3 sevenths. So this would be your answer in slope-intercept form. And notice that I didn't have to worry about fractions until the very, very end, just in simplifying. Now if you look at what my math lab does, and you click uh, view an example, they have fractions all over the place, and they make it a lot more difficult than it has to be. All right, now let's look at uh, problem number 10. Same thing that we just did, but now I want to be perpendicular. So to be perpendicular, I said to crisscross these coefficients. Swap these guys out. Now, when I do that, this becomes negative 7x, and that becomes 4y. So that's just crisscrossing those coefficients. But I've got to change the sign of one of them, right? Now, if you're going to do this, 
however you change or whichever sign you change you want to make sure that you end up with a positive lead coefficient see this guy is already negative and that's a problem so I think he should be the guy who changes his sign so I'm gonna make this guy a plus I'm gonna change his sign by multiplying that negative times a negative and this guy was already positive because it came from that positive 4 and this is going to equal some number but again this is not a guessing game we can figure out exactly what that number is by using this ordered pair and just like the last problem this 6 that we had in this old equation is trash throw them away we don't need them let's use the 8 and 5 so we're going to do 7 times 8 plus 4 times 5 that's 56 plus 20 and very quickly we get 76 and there we go that's your equation and you might think that something is up no this is exactly what it is if you were to solve this for y let's see what we have so let's rewrite this 7x plus 4y equals 76 solve it for y so we got to move the 7x to the other side and then divide everything here by 4 so we have y is equal to negative 7 fourths x plus 19 alright so that's your answer in slope intercept form but there's something else I want you to see I want us to see what would happen if I took 4x minus 7y equals 6 and I solve this guy for y because um, these these two equations their slopes aren't supposed to be the same they're supposed to be negative reciprocals well let's see what happens and this one I would subtract 4x to the other side and then I would have to divide everything by negative 7 like this so we have y is equal to positive 4 sevenths x minus 6 over 7. Now look at the slopes. This slope is 4 over 7, and this slope is the negative reciprocal, so it all checks out. We know this is a good equation. We know that's going to equal 76 because I can plug in 8 and 5, and I don't really have to do a whole lot of work there, not compared to what you would see if you were to do this in my math lab. So try this and see what you can do.